Are the Twitter files over? Elon Musk was asked in a Twitter Spaces yesterday about the future of the reporting project. Let's listen. Oh, actually, I do have a question. And well, I guess people keep DMing me. Uh, they're wondering, what's the future of the Twitter files? Uh, do you still have any journalists working on these things or no? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, at some point we need to move on from the Twitter files, but um, I think there's a few things uh, left. Uh, but uh, you know, generally, I think we, there's, there's not there's not a lot uh, that I'm aware of that's left. So um, it's mostly just like you know, let's move, just move on to the future. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah, I think that's more or less true. Oh, actually. I Meanwhile, MSNBC journalist Mehdi Hassan is still poking fights online after his contentious interview with Matt Taibbi, this time with friend of the show Lee Fong. In a new article titled MSNBC's Mehdi Hassan Gets Basic Facts Wrong on DHS Content Moderation Partnership, in the article, Fong fact-checks Hassan's claims that Matt, Matt Taibbi, quote, deliberately and under oath misrepresented the facts when he testified to Congress last month. Fong tweeted a link to the Substack article yesterday and was almost immediately blitzed by a number of tweets by Mehdi Hassan claiming that Fong is lying about me in his defense of Taibi and that while working together at The Intercept, Fong launched an Islamophobic smear against me since deleted, which you only then apologized for because the bosses made you. Fong responded by tweeting, that never happened and you're very thin-skinned to resort to this type of smear. I posted new emails and docs showing the reality of the DHS issue you originally raised. Instead of acknowledging any of this reporting, you now start defaming me. Grow up. Finally, Hassan tweeted that someone's auditioning hard to be Elon Musk's new Twitter files reporter, to which Lee Fong replied, saying, I've reported more original stories in a month than Mehdi has in decades. I already had access to the Twitter files and reported on the Pentagon's covert network, but I didn't go to a fancy prep school like Mehdi to learn his famous debate tactics. Woof. Yeah, so there's a lot here. Um, I, I looked at uh, Lee Fong's uh, Substack post where he goes into what Mehdi Hassan's fact check of Matt Taibbi got wrong. Matt Taibbi did make um, a couple errors and has acknowledged and corrected many of those. But uh, part of Mehdi Hassan's, uh, you know, kind of really destroying of Taibbi in that video was that was, was the accusation that Taibbi had confused the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Agency with the Center for Internet Security. The former is a government agency. The later, is, the latter is a is a uh, non-government nonprofit. And in in one of his tweets or, or discussions of the tweet, he did end up confusing the two. But as Fong points out, both were involved in the flagging of content for social media companies at the behest of the government. They're part of this vast kind of partnership. Uh, so it was it was not wrong to to portray both groups to. Uh, to Congress as yeah, having been involved. Oh, God, Robbie, like, come on. Who cares? I think the, the problem, well, this, this, this is the issue. I say who cares because Matt Taibbi readily on the air accepted that he made errors, mm -hmm. right? Like, to his credit, in the exchange with Mehdi Hassan, he admitted to some errors being made. But the problem was that Mehdi pretended, or I shouldn't use that kind of evaluated in the term, but Mehdi framed the fact of some factual errors being made by Matt Taibbi as undermining the entire right. critical value, journalistic value of the Twitter files in, 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 in total. And where I think Matt, uh, Mehdi was in much better standing was in criticizing the moral inconsistency of Elon Musk and the Twitter files and Matt Taibbi in particular, given the how differently he was treating speech issues with Modi in India than how he was framing himself as a free speech absolutist in an American context. And I understand if Matt, if, 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 if Elon wants to take the position that he does what he can do in the countries based on their laws, what he's allowed to do, fine. But the whole discourse, and Matt Taibbi participated in this, was framing Elon Musk as a crusader for the rights of uh, free speech, more broadly speaking. And he specifically was invited on Mehdi's show to talk about the question of the inconsistencies of the censorship program by Elon Musk on t India Twitter versus US Twitter. And when Matt Taibbi was asked about that question on Mehdi's show, Matt Taibbi said, oh, well, I don't know much about that which is a reasonable response in a world where Mehdi's just randomly bringing that up. But when you specifically were engaged in a Twitter 
exchange about that particular Guardian article and then weren't prepared to talk about the subject of that Guardian article when Mehdi brought you on the show, you end up looking either unprepared or in bad faith. And that, because that is the core issue of the Twitter files, because that's the core issue that's supposed to have motivated Elon Musk to spend $44 billion on this app in the first place so that he can do free speech for all of us. That is why the first part of this clip that we played, where last night, when asked about the Twitter files, Elon Musk suddenly says, ah, everything has to come to an end. We, we about run that clock on this one. There's not much left to investigate. We're gonna, we're gonna close up shop. It's an radical departure from the posture he was in just a few weeks ago. Just a few weeks ago, Matt Taibbi was taking hail fire from Democrats in Congress, putting well, I, his, his, his reputation on the line, all to defend this oh-so-important free speech project, which I think is also in, oh, important. And now, just days, days after a public falling out with, with Matt Taibbi, apparently because Matt Taibbi is big on Substack and likes Substack and didn't want to give up his livelihood and all of his patrons on Substack, uh, Elon Musk stops following him and is now saying publicly on a on a stream that he want, wants to end the entire project. That but why, seems like but why not is that very criticism? principled. Well, not very principled of Elon Musk, yes. not of Matt Taibbi. No, 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 not of Matt Taibbi. It's Elon Musk. Elon Musk spent all this time saying he has the whole yeah, he's point of not living up all to this the, money yeah, I, is for free speech. And then apparently all of that goes out the window the second he has a fight, a, an online disagreement with a journalist who has given up so much for Musk and put so much of his reputation on the line for Musk. To me, it's it's slimy, it's gross, and it speaks to the fact that Elon Musk never was really invested in this to the extent that I think the journalists who are reporting on the Twitter files really were. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think it is unfortunate that he's not living up to the commitments uh, entirely that he outlined when he took over Twitter, that the enforcement of the rules has not become less arbitrary, and in fact, it's become more arbitrary in several fronts. The Twitter files were, I think, a very important project. It, it's very clear that the mainstream media is out to pretend that they amount to absolutely nothing, that you've been misled and gaslit about them, that there's nothing to see here. No, there was no collusion or cooperation. It was you know, all voluntary. It's, it's all above board. I think that's utterly, I think that's horse crap, uh, totally wrong on every level. And I'm not surprised to see, MS, uh, to see MSNBC and so on seizing upon this. You know, Eddie's a very, uh, uh, I wouldn't say effective interview, he's an effective skewerer of the other person in interview context where the host has all the power to, uh, I think Tybee, if was going to do it, could have come a little bit better prepared, he could have been but much it's much better it's, prepared. Yeah, but it's Let's you know we know we're hosts of shows. We know the power the interviewer has to set right. the agenda but and to blame, hammer into. I don't blame Taibi for the railroading aspects of the interview and the fact checking mm -hmm. and all of that. Where I think he actually looks bad, where he substantively looks bad, was the part that he had full capacity to prepare for. The part about Modi. I don't. I mean. I mean. That's so ridiculous, though, because Mehdi Hassan would never, like, answer questions about things his owners have done wrong, right? He would, is he, is he going to do a rant about where he disagrees with Comcast or MSNBC? I don't know, but no. That, but that's about, no. That's, but that's, Nonsense. that's a critique of Mehdi Hassan. Matt Taibbi is being held to higher standards here because I value Mehdi, uh, his, frankly, in this arena, his integrity more. Me well, Mehdi he's just Hassan, shown his integrity. He's just, he's just parted ways with this no. partnership. No, during that interview, this this is what was such a problem. During that interview, Ma uh, Mehdi Hassan asked him point blank, "Is there anything that you're willing to criticize uh, Elon Musk on?" He should have turned the question back onto Mehdi Hassan. <laughs> no, he shouldn't. He should have answered the question. If you ask me, I don't care. If there's a person in the world, the person I love the most in the world, the person I hate the most in this world. You can come up with something to say you disagree with someone on. It's not a big deal. Only children have the level of black and white thinking that says, "Gosh, I can't come up with something that I disagree with someone on." And Matt Taibbi couldn't. He refused. He said, "I like." He said, "I like Elon Musk." There's nothing I can think of right now. Like nothing. No, I don't especially want to criticize him. And I mean, then there's Dave, no shortage of criticism of Elon Musk out there. But I don't. Da but here's the issue. <laughs> Days later, when it was no longer about Indians having their speech rights suppressed, when it was about Matt Taibbi's own personal substack and, and his links not working on Twitter, suddenly we're in the realm now of being able to criticize Elon Musk. And I don't blame uh, uh, Taibbi for the choice to part ways. I think that I would also have protected the, the relationships that he built on substack over Elon's capricious Twitter tyranny. But at the end of the day, I think critics are perfectly legitimate in saying it is very frustrating that Matt Taibbi only woke up 
to what we have all been saying about how Elon Musk has been unfair and inconsistent on Twitter and in his policies when it personally affected him. That's the issue. I don't. I, I don't think he's unaware of that, but would it have been productive for him to go on some anti-Elon Musk rant and shut down his access no, to these? I don't think he should have like, gone on an anti-Elon Musk like, rant. Obviously, but here, here's what's been exposed. That even saying the mildest thing about Elon Musk, saying, I, you know, would get you, would get a program like the Twitter files shut down. What does it mean about Elon Musk and his commitment to the Twitter files? If he would have, and now we know that it is true, he would have shut down the entire oh-so-important First Amendment free speech journalistic endeavor. And I mean that. I do think it was important. But he would have shut down that whole thing simply because Matt Taibbi disagreed with him about something. Look what he did to Barry Weiss. Barry Weiss simply said, hey, Elon, I think it is inconsistent and a violation of speech for you to shut down the Elon Musk account and to also ban all of the journalists that cover the Elon Musk account. And bam, she was kicked off the Twitter files. And Matt Taibbi, I asked him this on my show, he was unwilling to criticize or say anything about Elon Musk's choice to part ways with Barry Weiss, his colleague in this oh so important legitimate endeavor. I mean, you're yelling at me like I'm a fanboy. No, no, I'm not yelling at I'm you. Not. I, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I'm I don't not. mean to be. So this is a direct <laughs> I you, criticize, I've criticized Elon Musk yeah, all yeah, the time yeah. on so the show. So this is a direct you, but it's, I'm, 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 I'm trying to express the frustration that I think so many people have had. It has been almost impossible to be considered to be good faith in your criticism of what's been going on here because, I'm sorry, there are a lot of fanboys, and the fanboys are mm -hmm. now in this really tough position because the Elon fanboys and the Taibbi fanboys were largely one. And now that Elon has, I think, behaved abhorrently to Matt Taibbi, who have laid a lot on the line for, Matt, uh, for, for Elon Musk, people are having to make a decision about, you know, you, you, can't, you can't love them both. You can't say that everybody was okay in the situation. I've seen some people try. I some, see some people try to split the baby and say, wow, it's just a shame this all came to an end, as though it was no one's to be at, at blame. As though the Elon Musk's choice to disable this entire project, right when Matt Taibbi, by the way, said he was ramping up the Twitter files, Matt Taibbi said he was hiring additional journal, uh, journalists to go through the information, including Aaron Mate. I was very excited about that and what they might uncover. Suddenly, on a whim, and because he obviously doesn't care that much well, about Elon free speech seems, in this project, Elon shut it if down. If you look at the, uh, there were some DMs actually that came out publicly between Taibbi and Elon. Uh, and also uh, interaction he had with Michael Schellenberger, who's been on the show. Actually, Michael Schellenberger shared an article I wrote about this whole exchange for reason, and then Elon responded to it, and then Schellenberger like pushed back on the response, and then Elon deleted those tweets. So I actually don't know what they said because I was in the middle of playing Dungeons and Dragons when this was all happening. And later I'm like, oh my god, Elon responded to me, but I can't see what it is. Uh, it, it sounded like he was. Elon seems frankly confused about what the arrangement for Substack writers is because he was he was he's like oh wait you work for Substack you're an employee of Substack I don't think that's the right way to describe people who are on Substack there is Substack guaranteed some people from yes. moving to Substack a year's worth of of payment to like a baseline, in, a baseline in case their subscribers were not or took longer to be what they want and then so, some people Matt Iglesias who was one of those people said I actually wish I had not taken that deal because I was I would have made like triple as much money because he did have a lot of subscribers. Yeah, I'm sure so Tabby said it's a kind of situation. probably. Yeah. So it's a kind of I, that that doesn't mean he's an employee of Substack and he works for Substack. That's not like the arrangement they 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 have with people. It's not like, like he's not part of the Substack company. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I think Elon was either wrong to characterize like that or just doesn't really understand. He doesn't what understand this and he doesn't listen, which is why a lot of us predicted that despite supporting the goals of Elon and buying Twitter. He wasn't going to be the guy. I know we have to go. I just want to read this last um, statement from Jack Dorsey, the previous owner, founder, CEO of Twitter. He said this of the Twitter files. As for the Twitter files, I wish they were released WikiLeaks style with many more eyes and interpretations to consider. And along with that, commitments of transparency for present and future actions. I'm hopeful all of this will happen. There's nothing to hide, only a lot to learn from. I, I don't know why uh, Dorsey seemed to think that Taibbi would better shepherd his company than he would. This the is Musk. the kind of, sorry, that Musk, sorry, my apologies. Musk would shepherd the company better than, than him. This is the kind of maturity that I would have liked to have seen. I would have loved to see, and I still would like to see a WikiLeaks style access to the Twitter files because because unlike Elon Musk, I do think this is an important 
important project that should continue regardless of what your personal feelings are about Matt Taibbi. And I only hope that saner miles like, uh, minds like Jack Dorsey's will prevail here. The once and future CEO, perhaps. <laughs> More rising right after this.